so we have uh, output devices again like input devices we are we are going to categorize our output devices into two categories some are general purpose input devices some are special purpose uh, general purpose output devices some are special purpose output devices so general purpose output devices basically we have uh, monitors screens leds lcds these are general purpose output devices or you can say uh, now, nowadays you have multi multimedia etc these are these are uh, most frequently used devices and the, as of in the form of in order to see your output so these are general purpose output devices but when you want to convert your output into an hard output, that is your soft output results into in the form of print, you want to generate a print of those outputs. So you have a special purpose output devices called printers. Or if you have some graphical, graphical uh, outputs, uh, for example, any uh, designs or any uh, any type of uh, advertisements then you have a special purpose output devices in in, in the printing press available for you uh, uh, we call them plotter or different types of high resolution graphic printers plotters are actually a high definition graphic printers printing devices so these, these are special purpose output devices then you want to uh, Previously, uh, speakers are treated as special purpose, but nowadays speakers, we treat them as a general purpose output devices when we want to hear the audios. So we have uh, uh, computer in, in, our, in computer or sometimes internally or externally, we have speakers which converts, uh, uh, which enable us to listen the audio of our uh, lecture or any other uh, video so basically we have uh, we have different again we categorize our output into two categories general purpose and special purpose similarly these these are io devices that are input output devices then we have processing devices processing devices we have central processing unit cpu we call it a cpu that is a microprocessor in our case we have microprocessors uh, different types of computer we have different types of processor may so supercomputer we have different type of processor and mainframe micro mini so in our uh, we have micro computers which we use in our daily life so we call this cpu that is central processing unit of our computer as microprocessor and if you want to if we don't want to specify if we want to take it in the general form we call it cpu cpu is not the uh, casing you can see uh, cpu is a chip which is available inside the motherboard a square chip which is named as the brain of the computer which actually process all the instructions so central processing unit we call it cpu and cpu is further classified into two portions one is named as cu c capital and u capital or you can say instead of cu we can also call it b capital i capital and u capital that is b i u that is control unit or sometimes we call it bus interface unit in motherboard we have different circuits available through which our data is moving from one part, one component, one peripheral components to other components. Printed circuit board, that is, printed lines are available in our motherboard. We call those lines in which data is actually traveling. We call it buses, data buses. We have other another type of things in our computer system we call it cables i'm not talking about cables computer data cables i'm talking about computer buses which is in the form of circuits available in the inside the motherboard we call it bus interface unit because due to this bus interface unit we control our instructions so we call it bus interface unit or the second name we call we give them is control unit this is a control unit which controls all the instructions happening inside your computer system then if if you want to process those instructions 
then inside your uh, microprocessor or inside your computer central processing unit CPU, we have another unit which is named as EU that is execution unit if you want to execute or process any instructions so we have execution unit when in inside the execution unit we have ALU that is automatical logical unit inside execution unit we have arithmetical logical unit what arithmetical logical unit do if we have arithmetical calculation that is plus minus multiply divide it is processed by the arithmetical unit and if we have logical calculation for is something is greater than something and something is le less than equals to greater than equals to that is inequalities then it is executed by the logical unit so we call it alu that is arithmetical logical unit and whatever the output generated by arithmetical logical unit it is stored over there inside the processor we have small unit we call it we call it uh, uh, i can say uh, we we call it registers data registers every instruction you can uh, i'm going i can give you an example of a calculator if you press 2 plus 2 is equals to so this ex after execution 2 plus 2 it is stored for a while in a register and you can see in the output device that the answer is 2 plus 2 4 and it is stored in the register unless and until you execute a new instructions after that you if you multiply 3 multiply by 5 is equals to now that register is overwritten by the new output so we have small memory unit inside uh, the microprocessor which holds the data for a while unless and until you execute a new instruction called data registers then then we have uh, memory units so in memory and storage devices we have memory units and we have storage devices so storage devices we have hard drives and CDs and DVDs and USBs these are storage devices in which we can store huge amount of data but issue is what what is the main issue with these devices these are very slow devices storage devices are very slow devices so if you want to execute an instruction if you want to execute an instruction uh, and processor engage with the these slow devices the, uh, the processing speed is going to be uh, slower down because uh, hard drives are larger in capacity but very slower devices so we put between hard drive and processor we put a speedy device we call it a RAM so what RAM does RAM converts your uh, I can say RAM can RAM converts your uh, uh, RAM fetch your uh, data from from the uh, or uh, hard drive so that it can hand over to the processor to in execute the instructions. So it is an intermediary devices device memory device between a hard drive and a processor which execute the instructions and enhance the processing in speed of your computer of your computer so it takes the data which it is actually need to be executed by the processor from the hard drive and handovers to the processor so that it can be executed and meanwhile when some more instructions are need to be executed by the processor it holds those instructions and then again hand over to the processor in this way we disengage our uh, compute um, a processor with a very slow devices uh, that is hard drive by putting some speedy devices memory memory devices called RAM and then in between RAM and processor we have another speedy devices called cache so cache holds the most frequent execute uh, executable uh, instructions from the RAM and handovers to the CPU so the by putting these intermediary devices between the processor and the uh, you, we can we call it 
secondary storage devices that is either CDs or DVDs or you can call it uh, hard drives between these slow devices and a very fast device processing device micro CPU we put these smaller speedy devices in order to uh, uh, speed up our execution processing time uh, that is less we want to take less amount of time in order to process and any, any activity you want to process so this is how uh, any computer hardware works then in memory you have uh, ram rom caches all these comes under the your memory devices storage device hard drive cds dvds floppies all these comes under the storage devices so you can see this is central processing unit this is input device and these are storage device so storage devices are very slower devices so you put a memory device which holds the information from the storage device and send those information to the cpu to be processed and in in cpu we have control unit and arithmetic and we have execution unit in execution unit eu we have arithmetical logical unit which actually executes the activities need to be performed then we have outputs whatever the result we have processed we want to see those results so we have output devices how a computer system works so data then input it is treated as an input then it is going to be processed and then we have an output so if output we call output as a in the form of information on we on the basis of which we used to take some decision so here you can see sometimes sometimes we need to sometimes we need to uh, store those information so we have so we have storage devices as well we call it uh, hard drives or cds or dvds or floppies or uh, these days we have usbs so functions of a computer system i pose that is input process output and storage so you can see here different hardwares RAM, memory devices, input devices, processing, storage, output devices, general purpose and special purpose output devices. Computer, I, as I told you, understand only uh, binary language that is 1010. Zero, zero. So we call one, any one or zero as a bit. So in the form of bits, whatever computer only recognize off and on, that is one means on or zero means off, like light switch, either it is on or either it is off. These switches are represented as binary digits or bits. Instructions and data are composed only of a series of bit. So for example, a binary digit bit is smallest unit of information that you, your computer can process. This is the smallest memory unit we call bit. A bit can be either one or zero. American standard for ASCII is a common coding system used to represent all characters, symbol and symbols and numbers in binary form. In ASCII, a group of eight bits is called a byte. If you combine eight bits, that is one, 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 zero, zero, and one, zero, one. So this, these are eight bits. We call all eight bits as a byte, one byte. For example, if you type, this is just uh, an example. If you type cool on the keyboard, your keyboard would change it into four bytes as follows. Every, every symbol will give you are uh, eight bits or one byte information so c means c has a, a decimal code 
so that, that decimal code is converted into a binary code that is you can see 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 so 64 64 65 66 67 it means that this the digit decimal digit for c is i will tell you later on how to do this conversion the decimal decimal digit for c is 67 so 67 is converted into 8 bits so this is the code for binary this is binary code of decimal 67 67 similarly we have something for o then we have eight eight bits for again and another o similar type and then we have something for l so when we type cool in inside the computer machine it is processed in this form in the form of binary digits and in display you can see so eight bits from a single from a single byte you can see one two three four five six seven eight eight bits is equals to one byte of information bit is the smallest unit but it was too smallest so we have converted or uh, enhanced our unit into a, a, a greater unit we call the combination of eight bits that is one byte later on bytes are not enough for us then we converted into kilobytes megabytes gigabytes terabytes pet petabytes and so on so byte values can be all all values all eight bits are zero it means that zero byte and all values are one 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 it becomes 255 that is one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four and one twenty eight one twenty eight plus all these one twenty seven is equals to two fifty five i will teach you later on how to convert it as a result binary numbers almost always written as a full byte so we will write instead of uh, smallest unit bits be converted into the form of bytes and binary numbers we always represent in different bytes one byte two byte three byte so we count in base 10 in base 10 if we have a decimal value decimal value means decimal tens so it bases 10 and if we want to convert a decimal into a binary number so how we can do it we must know that decimal values any if we if we have any decimal number it values can vary from 0 to 9 it cannot exceed the value 9 either it is 0 1 because decimal 10 10 when we start from 0 then we can approach only 9 so zero from 0 to 9 we have 10 values so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 So, so the base is 10, but we use from 0 to 9. So all these values, we, if we have more than this, we have 97, we have these values. It means that this is not 97. These are two values, 9, 7, base 10 in the these are two values so this is not a single value because as i told you that we cannot exceed from 9 in decimal so this is in 0 to 9 this is the maximum we have achieved in this and this is the 7 so 9 7 base 10 9 8 base 10 9 9 base 10 1 0 0 base 10 You got it. Counting in the binary is the same, but with only two symbols, one and zero. We have one, zero, one, zero, not more than this. Either one, one, zero. This is not 110. This is one, one, zero. One, triple, zero. One, zero, one, zero. One, one, zero. So this is how you're converting binary to decimal. So how we are going to convert any binary value into decimal value? We put... 2 key power 0 from 2 key power 0 onwards 
so 2 ki power 0 means 1 2 ki power 1 means 2 2 ki power 2 means 4 so in this way we are going to write over here 2 ki power 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 you can type it on above those, these values as well with your pencil now you want to convert so this where you multiply these values and write down over here 20 128 ones are 128 64 multiplied by 0 it is 0 32 ones are 32 plus so you you got you are going to write down in this way at 0 1 0 0 2 0 4 ones are 4 8 ones are 8 16 0 0 32 ones are 32 64 0 0 and 128 ones are 128 after doing this you are going to put addition sign between all the value and then you sum up all these values and you will get your decimal value for these binary digits that is 172 and if you want to convert this decimal values this decimal value into binary what you are going to do is you divide start dividing your value with 2 and if there is a reminder you put dash and put 1 and if there is no reminder you put dash and you put 0 and in this way you are going to convert decimal to binary so you can see where we have 1 we are going to add those values where we have 0 there is no need to add those values so for example we have yes one it means that we have one 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 over here and we have zero z dash means zero 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 so size matters computer memory and storage capacity are represented by their size I, as i told you previously when we have started calculation we have bit one and zero one is a bit zero is another bit so is one bit then we combine we change our uh, storage units into a larger one instead of bit we combined four bits and we call it one nibble one nibble then we combine two nibbles four bits plus four bits is equals to eight bit and we have given another larger name of our storage as bytes as i as you see in your daily lives you have grams kilograms so gram is the smallest unit thousand grams will convert your unit into a kilogram unit so in a similar way when we have started we used to measure it into bits but bits are very smallest unit we have to write on larger values so we have converted into nibble then we convert into byte then still byte is not enough so we started converted into kilobytes megabytes gigabytes and terabytes etc so these are the different memory size we use. I have discussed with this generic input devices and keyboard and mouse with you. These are data is entered by manual typing certain values, whatever it is. These are general purpose input devices, keyboard and mouse. Special purpose input devices. Then output devices we have. Then we have processor. I told you this type of chip inside your computer system as today's topic is hardware. So these are different components we are discussing over here. Converts data to useful information, interpret and execute and instructions communicate with input, output and storage. That I told you that entire controlling interpreting and processing is done by the central processing unit as it has two units controlling unit and execution unit and this this type of chips we have inside our on on our motherboard which actually process then this is our motherboard on which we connect all the peripherals and components required for a computer hardware uh, computer machine in the form in terms of hardware all these devices are called hardware which we are going to attach over here and these are different types of 
ports available in order to uh, plug in our devices in the computer system. Computer memory are internal storage areas in the computer used to either temporary or permanent store data and instruction to be processed as I told you from this ROM and RAM primary storage computer memory called computer memory ROM read only memory it is a permanent memory and RAM it is a random access memory it is a temporary memory sometimes we call temporary as uh, with the name uh, volatile and permanent memory as non-volatile memory then you can computer memory is categorized into internal and external internal memory we have volatile that is RAM non-volatile that is ROM external memory we have sequential access and random access sequential access we have TA drives then random access we have compact these CDs, hard disk, floppy drive, etc. What are the two types of memory in the system units? As I told you, volatile loses its content when the computer power is turned off. So RAM, whatever the data stored in RAM, it is going to be eliminated when you shut down your computer. Non-volatile does not lose its content when the computer power is turned off as, as we know ROM whatever the instructions uh, available in the ROM even if we uh, shut down those instruct uh, our system still those may, those information are uh, kept in the ROM and whenever we, uh, we mostly BIOS are available in the ROM the basic input outputs of the system are stored in the ROM that whenever we shut the power on our system what are the basic uh, instructions uh, provided to the different hardwares, computer hardwares is actually stored in BIOS and how to control different peripherals components work together in order to achieve a common task. So all these instructions are stored in BIOS. What is random access memory that is RAM also called primary storage and main memory chips that temporarily hold software instructions in data before and after it is processed by the CPU. RAM is the working memory of the computer. I, as I told you, due to RAM, we can increase by increasing the size of RAM, we can increase our processing. Uh, uh, we can reduce our uh, processing uh, time. It means that it uh, our process uh, in in order to execute any task it is going to be speedier and faster when we have large amount of RAM, size of RAM available in in our computer systems as it, these devices are faster than secondary storage that is hard drive what is read only memory memory chips that contains data instruction or information that is recorded permanently cannot be read or modified non volatiles bios basic input output system stored on rom sequence of instructions the computer follows to load the operating system and other files when you first turn on your computer these are stored in your rom similarly if you the the same thing stored rom is available in your smartphones as well whenever you turn on your smartphone so what actually how to load your android software uh, in your smartphone is again maintain uh, all these instructions are available in bios memory also called random access memory ram temporary it consists of electronic components that store data including numbers letters alphabets graphics and sound any information stored in ram is lost when you switch off your computer and in ROM the whatever the instruction is stored it is on permanent basis it is a permanent memory so here you can see CPU and RAM motherboard and in over here we have ROM as well uh, types of storage Types of storage, we have uh, secondary storage, primary storage memory, temporary storage, 
primary storage we call the same that is RAM. Secondary storage, long term storage. So primary storage devices we call it RAM or cache. Both are example of primary storage devices. These these are temporary storage devices. And secondary storage devices we have. external memory auxiliary storage secondary storage floppies hard disk cds drivers usbs all these are comes under the secondary storage devices so basically uh, why we study floppy nowadays floppy is obsolete but the the mechanism of st uh, storing the data is still we, we have in floppy is still available in the hard drive so uh, device is obsolete but the mechanism is still in the hard drive because this hard drive is again a magnetic storage and floppy devices are also a magnetic type of storage difference is that it, this is so magnetic disk and uh, nowadays in hard drives we have I uh, metal magnetic disks which uh, that is uh, these are actually metal disks in on which we actually by the mag electromagnetic effects we convert uh, store the data in the hard drives so basically uh, uh, if we talk about the size of uh, uh, a floppy previously people use to store data is only 1.44 megabytes so it is very smaller in size but uh, the if we see the structure of the uh, structure of a floppy inside the structure of floppy the similar type of tracks and sectors are available uh, we have or we use to uh, we create in order to store data in our hard drives as well so this is the reason why we are studying the floppy in in a uh, floppy disk we have this round round lines we call these tracks and then we cut those into different portions by cut by putting some lines we call it sectors tracks and sectors so each pie shape like this each pie shape is called a sector where we have uh, line uh, these lines circular lines and these uh, vertical uh, lines uh, the in between these lines and these tracks we have some smaller memory units you can see these these portions we call them uh, a smallest memory unit so in one smallest memory unit for example this is one unit then this is another then this is another in one smallest unit of uh, floppy we can store 512 bytes of data how much 512 bytes of data a sector is capable of holding 512 bytes of data basically we have uh, the circular track i'm talking about the circular track we have 80 tracks available in one side of a floppy in a and in, in a similar way we have 80 tracks on another side of the floppy as well as you uh, seen that your uh, audio tape cassettes are both sides side a and side b in a similar way above, this is the above surface and be, uh, the similar type of track and sectors available on the bottom side of the floppy so it is actually two side and and one smallest unit you can store 512 bytes of data and you have circular how many tracks 80 tracks and every track is having 18 sectors so one two three four five six seven so you can see one two three four five six seven every track is having 18 sectors so in this way if we multiply five 112 bytes multiplied by 18 this is one track data and if we multiply 18 by 80 it converts into a, uh, you can say uh, 80 tracks 
data storage and if you multiply by two you have entire floppy memory available that is 1.44 mp so in a similar way we have secondary storage devices and different different types and different uh, sizes you can read these things uh, by your own now and then we have secondary storage in secondary storage devices cds and dvds so this is a different mechanism so i'm going to discuss it uh, with you in the uh, next class that how to uh, store data uh, internal structure of uh, hard drive as well i'm going to discuss and the cds and, and dvds mechanism as well